Welcome to the Holistic Health Bites podcast. I'm your host, Andrea Nicholson, here with bite-sized episodes to empower, educate, and enlighten you with ways to lose weight, heal your gut, and achieve your ideal health so you can live an adventure-filled life. Let's dive in. Welcome back to the Holistic Health Bites podcast. In today's episode, we are talking about being addicted to stress. Now, most of us would say that we are not addicted to stress, but a lot of us actually are. Stress has become a normal part of our lives at a much higher level than ever before. We go from one thing to the next, always feeling like we're running out of time with a never ending to do list. And even when we're not busy, we find ways to stress ourselves out or we worry about things that might happen. We create problems in our minds where there aren't any. We all know that too much stress isn't good for us. It can cause all sorts of problems, both physical and mental, but it can be hard to control the sources of stress. I think part of the reason is because we're actually addicted to stress. We get a rush from it. It's like a drug. We constantly get dopamine hits from crossing things off our list, completing projects, accomplishing new goals, and setting new records. We constantly tell ourselves if we can just get through this one thing, then everything will be okay. But that's never really the case. There's always another thing coming, or we add more things to keep that dopamine drip coming. Over time though, This dopamine doesn't make us feel as good as it once did. Have you noticed that you get less satisfaction or you feel less joy than you once did from accomplishing these tasks? That's because you never stop having dopamine. You need bigger and bigger hits to feel joyous and satisfied with things in your life. It's a powerful drug that we have to consciously work to reduce so that we can find that joy in life again. We need to find a way to break free from our addiction to stress. It's not going to be easy, but it will be worth it. So let's talk about some ways that we can do that. So first, we have to admit and recognize that we have a problem. We have to acknowledge that we thrive on that go, go, go of life. The busy badge that we all wear. Side note, have you noticed yourself always responding with busy When someone asks how you've been, oh, it's good, but so busy. Oh my gosh, I've just been so busy. That is a sign of stress addiction. A lot of us are in denial about how much stress we're under or how much it's actually affecting our lives. We think that we can handle it or that it's just part of life. But the truth is, it's not healthy and it's definitely not sustainable. So take a good, hard look at your life and admit it to yourself. The second step is we have to start saying no more often. This is probably the hardest part for most of us because we're people pleasers and we wear those busy badges with honor. We are proud of just how busy we are. We identify as busy. Stress is just part of it. We want to make everyone happy. And we want to do everything asked of us, plus all of the things that we add to our own lists. But it's just not possible to do it all. And definitely not to do it all well. When we try, we just end up resentful, stressed out, irritable, hungrier, and completely burned out. So start saying no to things that really don't fit into your schedule that you really don't want to do anyway, and that you don't have to be the one to do them, or that someone else could do them better. It's okay to put yourself first for once. It's okay to have real downtime for you. Speaking of downtime, did you catch last week's episode? We talked about how to know if your downtime is actually restful. If you haven't listened to that one yet, go back and do so. The third step is to find healthy ways to cope with stress. We all need outlets for our stress because, well, the reality is we're all going to have stress all the time. So we need things like exercise, reading a good book, 
listening to music, journaling, and meditating. But this can also include things like crafts, art, and other creative endeavors. Or just doing more of the things that you love to do. The things that you find joy in. Things that you're passionate about or feel purposeful doing. Find something that works for you and make it a part of your regular routine. Not just when you're feeling stressed. Make it a daily or weekly habit. So when the stress does pile up, you're already in the habit of managing it in a healthy way. The fourth step is... Start setting some boundaries in your life so that you don't end up with a plate full of tasks that you shouldn't be doing. This looks a little different for everyone, but some examples could be things like only checking work emails during certain times of the day, not working on weekends, taking a real lunch break away from your desk, not answering text messages or calls after a certain time in the evening, Maybe you need to limit your screen time, especially with social media and any negative or drama-filled media. You might need to set boundaries with yourself. You might need boundaries with others, or you might need both. And the fifth and final step that we will talk about today is to practice gratitude for yourself, for your body, your health, your job, your home, your friends, your family, your food, your pets, anything and everything around you. It doesn't have to be perfect to have gratitude for it. Be grateful for what you do have or what you can do, no matter how small it seems. So those are five steps that you can take to help break your addiction to stress. It's not going to be easy, but it will be worth it. If you're feeling overwhelmed and like you just can't do this on your own, please reach out for help. I'm here for you. Be sure to subscribe to this show in your favorite podcast player. And I would love it if you'd leave a five-star review so that others can more easily find this show. Also, feel free to share this show with others who could benefit from this information. Next week, we'll be wrapping up this stress series with some additional emotional stress management techniques. And then in the final week of this series, I'll be answering your questions. So if you have questions about stress, stress management, how stress affects your health, any of the topics that we've addressed so far in this series, anything stress related, shoot me an email at andrea at healthylifewithandrea.com and I will answer it in that final episode of this series. So until next week, be well and vibrant. Thanks for being a faithful listener to the podcast. I'd love it if you left me a five-star review on this podcast so that others can more easily find this valuable information. Did you know I also work one-on-one with clients? I approach solving health challenges like I approached solving crimes by conducting a thorough investigation into your case. Sadly, hundreds of millions of people in the U.S. have insulin resistance, pre-diabetes, and diabetes, and the vast majority have no idea. I'm here to fix that. If you struggle with low energy, stubborn weight, hypertension, sleep disturbances, or any other undesired symptoms, let's talk. All you have to do is schedule a free call. The link will be in the show notes. And no, you do not need to live near me.